Good morning, folks. Top stories today begin with a release from the European Southern Observatory. This is an artist's interpretation of a magnetar, and their latest release describes the first celestial partner found for such a star, and even goes into some pretty cool concepts like star quakes. We also have a solid release from NOAA with some troubling inferences to be drawn. If tropical systems are peaking further and further towards the poles, why would that be so? And what does it mean for the U.S. East Coast? Good read. However, hands down, the story of the day comes in the form of one I wish I'd had for the ending sequence to Why Global Warming Failed, where we showed that while the politicians are scrambling to explain 20 years of admitted global warming prediction failures, the real experts have long moved on. The future of climate study will involve the direct connection to our star, and yeah, that's the same Lockwood from the speech. Big fan, Mike. I wish I didn't have to report this next one. To quickly recap last night's second upload, the story for over a decade has been that global warming scientists find major flaws, but then their funding is threatened, their jobs endangered, and they have even been threatened personally. Well, just days ago, John Coleman helped share the guts and honor of Lennart Bengtsson, powerhouse name in meteorology, joining a policy group skeptical of the mainstream explanation for why our planet is changing and just days later. His work is threatened, and also his personal health and safety. How'd they get their consensus on global warming? Yeah, I wonder. Anywho, boom goes Micronesia. In the past day, we began with a 6.1 and followed this morning with a multi-minute 6.6 .6 tremor that rang as high as 7.0 on some auto readers. Have to put them on foreshock watch for more. Remember the rest of the ring is unstable too with volcanoes to the north, that Oregon quake two days ago in the instability of the Pacific Ridge. Quickly to the weather. Another mostly beautiful day here. The blues on the precipitable water overlay show the only areas of note. When we bring up Europe, the pressure overlay, we see a strong system over the southeastern nations that has already caused Bulgaria multiple weather emergencies and will continue affecting the larger area. North Atlantic low, too scared to come ashore and the warmth continues drying up over and over again. Meanwhile, North Pacific lows are gone. The main low is well north into Canada. Its convergence will combine with the southern energy and will again produce the worst weather in the states along the east. After going ape nuts on us for a few days, the coronal magnetic fields have begun to settle. Wouldn't be shocked if the flip was done. The solar wind is calm with one little density spike in the morning's early hours, not causing any shield instability, but we are expecting a coronal hole stream today or tomorrow. Yesterday, we spied an uptick in flaring and we sure got it, but when you get excited for high sea flaring, you know your star is exhausted and needing a grand minimum nap. Remember from yesterday's news, yet another prediction of the coming solar silence. The departing sunspots lost their delta about two hours after gaining it back. She's decaying along with the southern central region. We set our eyes north to the new group. Large umbra separated, but look at the central arc with bipolarity. We have central beta development that's begging for some more force so she can make things happen. If she develops, she's got a shot. Southern incomers don't appear to be relevant at this time. Green outgoing coronal hole stream is what we're awaiting in the solar wind. The southern hull opened up to Earth overnight. She's got some power, so we'll hope Micronesia has got her tantrum out and we won't see any bigger ones. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.